this is the epicenter here, Madison, Wisconsin, of odd things going on, uh, at least among Republicans. And Ed Garvey is in the studio with me with the Fighting Bob Fest. He is the editor of FightingBob.com. FightingBobFest.org is the uh, the uh, website for information about the event, which right. is uh, which is happening tomorrow, all day tomorrow. Uh, what is it? Uh, Nine in the morning till five thirty in the afternoon at the Nine until five, unless uh, the beer breaks us up earlier. <laughs> You never know. Did you say the beer or the, the bureau? Beer. The beer. Well, maybe the bureau, too. <laughs> okay. Uh, unless we run out of beer. And uh, he, he's previously the executive director of the National Football League Players Association, I, a, a columnist for Madison's Capital Times, the author of Bidding for Power, senior partner in the law firm Garvey McNeil & Associates. you got quite a resume. So, uh, and and let me just give you a quick summary or actually ed why don't you do that what's 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 going on with the fighting bob fest here who's going to be here who's going to be speaking what's going to be going on well this is our 10th bob fest so this is sort of an interesting moment for us and we were we decided that the title should be uh, class warfare fight back and so we picked the, the 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 hero of ours right now bernie sanders to be the keynote speaker along with jim hightower as you can imagine uh, dennis kucinich and yourself uh, we're going to have uh, quite a group here Cornell West will also be here, and uh, Ellen Bravo, Dave Obey, former congressman, Tammy Baldwin. Uh, so it's going to be quite an event. We, uh, in the past, have had up to 10,000 people in the audience. We expect the same thing this year. That's, that's, I, I, this is absolutely marvelous, the, the fighting office. I, I, I was asked in a radio interview this morning, uh, is there anything like this else like this happening around the country? And I've you know, I mean, I've, I, I speak at the green festivals all over right. the country and, you know, they, they pull 15,000 people, but they're basically, you know, come and see the, the, the latest new solar panels kind right. of things or, or, you know, here's some great herbal tea, um, with speakers. And, and of course there's the national, uh, UU church event is a pretty big deal, but I don't know of anything, but that moves around the country. Is there anything like the Fighting Bob Fest anywhere else in the United States? I don't think so. And the way it got started, of course, we have to give credit to Jim Hightower because he originally came up with the idea of having what he called the Rolling Thunder uh, Progressive Chautauquas. Right. And uh, we did ours, and we got uh, Paul Simon was our first speaker and uh, did a terrific job, of course. And then the next year we doubled the size of the audience, and then it doubled again and so on. So I don't think there's anything like it. Tom Harkin has told me uh, that uh, he wants me to come to Iowa and help him set one up there, and Bernie Sanders would like to do one in Vermont. So I, I think it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful way to spread the word on a whole variety of issues. I mean, because yeah. you, you, you come into a community, uh, and you and I could speak and have an impact. When you bring in Bernie and uh, Hightower and Kucinich and so on, it just magnifies the impact that we, we can have on a community. So... We're, tr- we're taking these Bob Fests around the state. We had one in, in uh, Chippewa Falls this uh, past May. Went over very well. We're going to do one in Milwaukee, do one in Beloit, and do one in Green Bay. You know, our, our thought is this is one of the biggest or the best organizing tools to try to change the way things are going on in the state of Wisconsin. For our listeners who uh, are, are not in Wisconsin and have very little idea what we're talking about, describe what the Fighting Bob Fest is, how does it work, and and how if somebody's li- living in, listening in Los Angeles or in Butte, I, you know, Montana right. or something, how might they set up something similar to what's going on here? Well, I think the, the main uh, thing that you have to f- focus on is getting volunteers who are going to do the organizing, make the phone calls, knock on doors, make people get to the uh, central place, have a theme that makes sense to them that shows that, that you don't have to be a Republican or a Democrat or a socialist or a green or whatever in order to participate. We never figure out what anybody's politics are. Uh, and then we, we have, uh, uh, I, I think the main uh, ingredient to success is we have fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> I tell when I said from the beginning, if you can't have a good time, then don't do it. And, right. and I think sometimes the left gets so serious that they almost think it's a failure on your part if you laugh. And, and what we try to do is enjoy it, have some beer, have some music. Uh, Peter Lighty will be singing all sorts of the, the Raging Grannies. Uh, one of my favorite years is when we had Granny D. Haddock here. Oh, yeah, she, she, was, she was a friend of mine. Well, wonderful woman. Extraordinary and woman. Never forget when she stood up and she said, if you, look, if you call yourself liberal and you can't do anything about what's going on, then go home. <laughs> right. We don't need you here. So... We want to hold out hope to people in the audience that we can change things. 
So you bring in people who are uh, certainly to the left, but they are people who can be optimistic about what we can do, whether it's a recall of the governor, a recall of state senators, or uh, electing a progressive to the presidency or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. So it's really uh, an effort for, on our part to give people hope that we can bring about this change. Because sometimes, you know, I think we all have to admit, when you think about climate change and the refusal to recognize what, what's happening in our society or the, um, the Supreme Court decisions on Citizens United or the Koch brothers' involvement, you could get kind of depressing. Mm-hmm. And so we try to say to people, listen, you can't, sorry, but you don't have time to be depressed. You've got to get involved and in, in organize and fight back and raise hell. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and to that point, um, the, you said, you know, in, in order to do something like what you're doing, you, you, you've got to find the... Actually, let me, let me shift this question slightly. There are two theories the, the the main there are there are there's a, there's a debate going on nationwide particularly uh debate is probably the wrong word discussion among progressive groups about why is it that wisconsin rose up against scott walker in ways that michigan hasn't risen up against rick snyder there was a there were some you know demonstrations at the capitol but um uh, that that uh, that Florida hasn't written, risen up against, uh, uh, right. you know, uh, Rick Scott, that Indiana, uh, Mitch Daniel, you know, on and on and the list goes, uh, Ohio, uh, Kasich, uh, Maine even, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and I mean, you, there's a bunch of states where you've got right-wing governors who are doing things every bit as bad as what happened here. One theory is that Scott Walker d- tried to do so much so fast that it just blew people's heads, you know, exploded people's heads. And they went nuts. Another theory is, and and there and and the lesson that was learned out of that for conservatives was, you know, make your changes, but make them over the course of a year, not in the first two weeks, or whatever. Another theory is that what Walker did actually is more egregious. I'm wondering if you know a, a good chunk of the theory should be that the, the fighting Bob Fest mm-hmm. that there's a there's a progressive infrastructure here as a result of this party that you have every year. I think that's right. I mean. That's our perspective anyway, that uh, Fighting Bob Fest sort of prepared us to take on somebody like Walker and absorb some of the blows and, and to recover quickly and get back on the offensive. I mean, I think uh, there was a moment where the, the forces of evil, the Koch brothers and, and Walker and so on, were about to just take over. And uh, we just raised such a ruckus that they had to slow down and, and come to a halt until we could uh, figure out what was going on. And that became part of the recall efforts. The, the structure was there. The the attitudes were there. We knew each other. There was a friendship that had developed, and uh, people just went at it. Uh, and I think also the history of Wisconsin. Bob LaFollette, Gaylord Nelson. I mean, we've had some wonderful— You're talking some Republicans. <clears throat> well, and we've had some— Well, as you know, Democrats. Yeah. Progressives. Most, mostly, that's right. Yeah. It's, uh, a, a, of course, back in the day, I mean, Teddy Roosevelt was a Republican. That's it's, right. Yeah. It's important to remember. Yeah. Well, and the, and the progressives, and, you know, they joined the Republican Party ultimately. And That's right. It was the end of the, re- the progressive party. But now there's a move, actually, at this uh, fighting Bob Fest to create another progressive party. I don't know whether we'll do it or not, but it's at least it's out there and people are talking about it. Well, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Um Stick around. I'd like to. I'd like to dig into that if we can. Okay. Ed Garvey is with us. This is the. Uh, it's the Fighting Bob Fest here in Madison, Wisconsin, going on this afternoon. Stick up, or going on this weekend. We'll be right back. Madison, Wisconsin. We have we have with us Ed Garvey, who is uh, basically kind of running the the Fighting Bob Fest, for lack of a better word. Is I'll that... take all the credit. Okay. <laughs> it's all. I want no one else to stick to you. <laughs> We're none of the volunteers, none of our staff. You mentioned you mentioned before we went into the break uh, a third party, a progressive party, and uh, Bernie once mentioned on our show. In fact, it it, it ended up going viral that uh, perhaps President Obama should be primaried. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I I think he's kind of walked back from that position, but and and frankly, I don't think there's anybody out there who could or would do it, um, but the the issue of a third party has been a uh, uh, you know, kind of a bone in the throat of American democracy since, uh, well, literally since before the, the the Constitution was ratified. I mean, Madison in, in Federalist Number Ten goes on at length. He, that obviously he had figured out that first past the post, winner take all elections, meant that you could basically only have two functioning parties, or you'd end up with the possibility of a minority of people uh, ruling the country. 
and he didn't have a solution. I mean, it was it was 1861, I think, when John Stuart Mill came up with proportional representation, and and since then, most of the world's democracies have emerged. So, how do you do a third party in a way that doesn't end up shooting right. itself in the foot or shooting its best allies in the foot, and thus empowering uh, its its most virulent opponents? Well, it's a very tough question, and you know we've debated it back and forth. Uh, I would guess that uh, when if you were to ask people at Fighting Bob Fest of ten thousand or eight thousand, how many ever going to be there? How many of you are members of the Democratic Party? There'd be about five percent, maybe uh, Republican Party less. Right. Uh, so there isn't. Any... But that's that's true right across the board generally, isn't it? Yeah, I and, think it and, is. And is this an open primary state or a closed primary state? It's open primary. Okay, so Bob so... Follett was the the one who created the open primary. Okay, so there's not a there's not a a, a compulsion to be a member of the party here no, if you want to vote in fact, the primaries. In fact, uh, the way uh, uh, La Follette saw it. The party should be very weak. He he hated the idea that the that the money barons, you know, the robber barons would go into the room A and select the Republican candidate, and then be room B and select the Democratic candidate, and then said let the people decide. Right. But he said if you have an open primary where people nominate the candidates, all will go well. Well, the problem is Bob LaFollette didn't realize about 30-second spots and how much money the Koch brothers could put in to win the primary. Well, neither did the founders. And that's, right, nobody ever yeah. thought of it. Yeah, and, and, so then, and But there's also, you know, open primaries also leave you open for mischief. I grew up, you know, I grew up in Michigan, and I was in Michigan, I think it was the election of 68, when the Republican Party openly said Republicans should cross over in the primary, in the Democratic yeah. primary, and vote for George Wallace just to embarrass the Democrats. Sure. And Michigan was the only state that sent George Wallace as the presidential nominee. But but uh, there's a lot of closed primary states in the country. It, well, actually, here's where I was going with this. Uh, there is a third party, arguably, out there right now. It's right. called the Tea Party. And they have infiltrated and taken over the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we be using that as a model? Well, perhaps. I mean, uh, and I think that's why people have said to me, uh, as they prepare for this Bob Fest, we want to at least get into the discussion. Do we want to have a Tea Party like uh, you know, on the left or what do we want to do here? Do you want to have a party that nominates candidates or just a party that d defines issues? Um, I mean, it seems to me that one of the, the things we have to avoid is using all, all our energy to create a third party rather than to reverse the Supreme Court decisions on, on Citizens United. I mean, we've got to amend our Constitution, uh, but I think we also have to be ready for what the, uh, what the alternatives might be. But I, I'm uh, thoroughly uh, undecided when it comes to a third party. I mean, I, I think there's something to be said for it, but it takes tremendous energy and, and uh, you know, some finances to make it work, and I'm not sure we've got that kind of support. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that was, that's the thing that the Koch brothers were able to do, and Dick Army, I mean, Dick Army's worth millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, the Koch brothers, billions, right. um, in creating the, the infrastructure for the Tea Party, the, uh, you know, hiring people don't realize, uh, even, and people in the Tea Party, I, I find it amazing, you know, conservatives, Republicans, they, they come on my show and they'll go, oh, this is totally grassroots. Um, well, then who paid for the big, I mean, major Washington, yeah. D.C. and Los Angeles and New York City PR firms that charge millions of dollars to do, you know, and uh, that, that got those Tea Party events in the news. Right. And, you know, the, and almost to make your point, when you think about the effort we put in for one thing called Fighting Bob Fest, I mean, we've a tremendous year round effort to make sure we get good people, get the, the speakers we need to draw the crowds and so on. If you, if you look at this on a national level of, of having a political movement, right. uh, it is uh, pretty scary in terms of how much uh, time and effort you would have to go into it. And we don't have that kind of money. And I'm, money is the, I, the money. It seems the money is there. the main thing. And, and increasingly in America, it's, it's money rules. Right. And, and the, the, I think the big challenge of our time, the big challenge of democracy, the big challenge of America right now is how do we get to a point where the people rule instead of money rules? Because we're right back where the where Bob LaFollette was, right. you know, we're right back where the we Robert is, We're back. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, you know, we ask for, uh, we fight for public financing of elections. And then the Supreme Court says, oops, you can't do that. Right. Because they just knock down people. Right. They knock down Arizona's. And everybody knows that it's nonsense to think of a corporation as a person. But right. there you have Mitt Romney and, and the Supreme Court saying, oh, you know, they're, they, they are. So I don't know. It'll be an interesting discussion uh, at VOBFest. My suspicion is that there will be much more emphasis on how we define the issues and a willingness to say to the Democrats, if you are not going to take positions that we feel are important and, and helpful to the vast majority of the people, we're just not going to support you. Right. 
I mean, people say, well, you can't do that because the alternative to Obama is very bad. We say, well, you know, that, that's true, but we've been saying that for years. And I think maybe it's time to say we're going to take some steps in that direction. Yeah, I, I would be gung ho in favor of it if the long term plan was to infiltrate the Democratic Party, take it over from yeah. within and use that as the infrastructure to do it. And I think that a large part of that is already there with the Progressive Caucus that Bernie Sanders helped start. And it's just a it's just a matter of uh, hurting the cats. Uh, Ed, <laughs> Ed Garvey, thanks for being with us. Ed. Thank you, Tim.